So I like equipment and software controls to have labels that relate to their function. Frequency, gain, cue, ratio, threshold, attack, release, that sort of thing. Controls labeled focus, clarity, silk, sheen, shimmer, don't do it for me. Although, if a term gets used often enough, it can acquire a meaning that we can all understand, like presence or air. Maybe I'm just an old fuddy-duddy, or maybe someone could invent a new label for me. So what is it with the Klanghelm DC1A3 compressor plugin? OK, it's free, so I have no complaints. But what on earth is the deep control? How is anyone supposed to look at that and know intuitively what it does? Or maybe it's an invitation for a new user to find out. Or maybe it's a test of their ears. Can they hear what it does and apply it usefully to their work? Well, if you like intrigue, maybe you should tune out now and go and read an Agatha Christie novel. Because I can tell you from the horse's mouth that the deep control enables a sidechain high-pass filter to keep the low end intact. Well, that's what the horse said. And bearing in mind that this plugin is free, we probably shouldn't look this gift horse in the mouth. Or are they two different horses? Let's trot on. The manual for the DC1A3 says exactly that the deep control enables a sidechain high-pass filter to keep the low end intact. This is, in fact, only partially correct. And I'm going to demonstrate this to you so you know exactly what it does. And the demonstrations should be clear enough that you'll be in no doubt. I'm going to start with a sine wave sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I'll keep the level down so it isn't too painful on your ears. Here's the sweep with the compressor out. And with the compressor in, I've chosen settings that make the effect of the compressor and the deep control obvious. As you can hear and see, the compressor reduces the level of the sine wave as you would expect. And it's around the same degree of gain reduction across the frequency band. Now let's dive into the deep. OK, this is different. There's less compression in the low end, but also, surprisingly, there's less compression in the high end. The maximum amount of compression seems to center around 1 kilohertz or so. This pick of the envelopes of the three sweeps in turn shows what's going on. OK, so I'm going to ignore the high end for now and stick to the low. What's happening here and what use is it? The answer is that a compressor responds to the varying level of the input signal. When it gets louder, the compressor pulls it down. That's the gist. But often, if you want to compress a mix, the bass instruments will dominate the peak levels, and the compressor will mainly respond to them, creating a pumping effect in the other instruments and vocals. So a useful solution is to filter out some of the low-frequency energy from the side chain. The side chain is the signal that controls the degree of compression. Normally, it's the same as the input signal. But with a high-pass filter, it has less bass content, so the kick and bass instruments don't dominate the compression. You don't hear less bass in the output. The side chain goes nowhere outside of the compressor. Let's try another test. Here's a kick drum, reminiscent of the Roland TR-808. First, uncompressed. Now, with the compressor switched in.
The level is lower as you would expect, and there's some interesting transient shaping on the attack. Now let's switch in the deep control. As you can hear and see, the degree of compression is less. This is what we expect, but it's good to actually hear it. Now let's try an instrument that doesn't have much low frequency energy, a cowbell. First, uncompressed. Now compressed. And now with the deep control selected. No difference, or at least hardly any. So as we should expect, the deep control doesn't work on higher frequencies. That anomaly in the high frequency end that I mentioned earlier doesn't seem to matter. And that's because there are usually more peaks and more energy in the lows and mids than in the highs of a typical music signal. I can go further. Here's a rather concocted music segment. It consists of a bass note, 42 hertz, which is the lowest note of the bass guitar, but heard here as a sine wave with no higher frequency components. That's in the left channel. In the right channel is a Rhodes piano virtual instrument. Since both channels are linked, unless the dual mono button is pressed, which is a completely different story for another day, any compression in one channel will affect both channels equally. Let's hear what happens. Firstly, no compression. Now with compression switched in, but no deep. It should be clearly audible that the piano in the right channel is pumping in time with the bass note on the left. If this sounds good to you, then leave things as they are. But if you don't want pumping, then engage deep. Job done. Compression, but no pumping. Newsflash. Here's a significant point that applies to any compression done using a high pass filter in the side chain. The bass frequencies will still be compressed. They're controlled by the overall level of the signal after the side chain filter. They just won't be compressed as much. And they won't dominate the compression and cause pumping. End of newsflash. One more example, this time real music. The compression is exaggerated so that the effect of the deep control is as easily audible as I can get. Here's the clip without compression. And with normal compression. And now with the deep control engaged. The 
differences are subtle and you might have to listen a few times to tune into them, but they are there and there's more stability in the other instruments because they're not being pumped by the kick and bass. To someone who mixes day in, day out, this will be as plain as night and day. To a newcomer to mixing, it might seem too subtle to be worth bothering about, but my view is that it's always the case that it takes an awful lot of subtleties to build a mix. The grand plan is vital, but the small details, and very many of them, need to be right too. I'm David Miller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.